welcome. Paper time, and after 48 hours of Fabio Capello, what a relief to pick up the Continental Press and read about Fabio Capello. Because yes, whilst you've heard the English side of things so far, here we've got the foreign account, a bit like Harry's dog if you will. And the dramatic departure of England's square George Supremo was massive news all over the continent, of course, particularly in Italy, where his status as top banana, in what the Italians still call the home of football, had long been a comfort to them in the face of their own relative decline. Uh, the papers in Italy putting a brave face on it then on Thursday. Here's La Repubblica. Bye bye, mister. Only a naive child, they say, would think this was really about John Terry, it was actually about two parties who couldn't stand each other. It's the same all over the world, whether you're a manager in London or in Rocca Canucha, the manager always goes for one reason, when the team's not playing well or the relationship breaks down. That's two reasons. Uh, the inventors of football, uh, who, the paper reminds us, hadn't won anything since the Queen was a teen, could only bear Fabio if he won, but instead he produced that horror in South Africa. <laughs> Indeed. Over in the Corriere della Sera, meanwhile, Capello slams door in English faces. England, they say, are left with the Cerino in mano, taking the third light off the match, uh, with a hot potato in hand. And underneath there's a classic bit of dietrologia here, the Italian art of reading between the lines. They say, one thing is clear, Capello is the victim of a war of clans that got out of hand, and they name the man behind it. Rio Ferdinand, who whipped up the whole Ferrari because he was so jealous of JT having the armband. And if it hadn't been for you, pesky Corriere, he'd have got away with it. Corriere's conclusion, behind the scenes, English football is not so different to our continental game. It's just a big soap opera. Well, the main sports daily, meanwhile, the Gazzetta della Sport goes with Capello shock. He feels betrayed, they say, but he wouldn't bow down to the English because deep down, he's still the same Capello who turned the lights out at Wembley in 1973, beating England with a goal that he then dedicated to the waiters of London. Yesterday, he turned the lights out again there, this time for good. That's beautiful. Uh, understand the English, implores of the paper of its readers. It has been cursedly tough for them to put their team in the hands of a foreign guru. And over on the other page, meanwhile, under the big shock headline, they look at where Fabio might be heading next. Juventus is a top call, or possibly Inter, or Anzi, or maybe he'll be rejoining his old chum, Franco Baldini, at Roma. Hmm, imagine if you went to Spurs. Well, wherever he goes, they say Capello will leave admiring still the English sense of civility, but less so their double dealing. Well, luckily, he'll be well away from that sort of thing back in Italy, where this week, as the paper reveals just a few pages later, four more City Out games came under investigation in the big match-fixing scandal. Now, it's been a week or two since we've looked at this, but in the meantime, the focus has now shifted from Atalanta in the north, where pyjama-clad Cristiano Doni made your brown eyes blue for Atalanta fans, to the south, where various players from Bari are now behind uh, Bari's, after witnesses talked of bags of money waiting in their dressing room. It's rather taken the sheen off Bari's season. It's a new money loaf for Bari uh, and all that. Anyway, while the case rumbles on, a quick mention of the Serie A match that went on for three weeks, Roma-Catania, and not because it took them that long to get the score right. Now, this game actually kicked off way back on the 14th of January, but was rained off 65 minutes in with a scoreline at 1-1. Well, this week, with a space in the two clubs' diaries, the FA called everyone back to Catania to play the remaining 25 minutes. 15,000 people turned out to watch them do it. Scoreline stayed 1-1, though. Fascinating stuff. Now, elsewhere in other deposed managerial despot news, Johan Cruyff won his case against Louis van Gaal. You remember this? Kicking him and the board out at Ajax. There you go. Cruyff camp claims a victory. This leaves Johan free to make a Cruyff return, taking over the running of the ailing Dutch giants and bringing in a whole new set of youth coaches like uh, Overmars, Brian Roy and Yap Stam as well. Very good. Well, next up then, and speaking of uh, bringing in fresh blood, in Spain, cycling has managed to knock football off the front pages of the major sport dailies. Uh, thanks uh, this to that two-year ban for Alberto Contador testing positive for clambuterol. Sample Spanish reaction to this. Cursed clambuterol for going in this poor man's body. Normal service was soon resumed, though, with the papers back to churning out top footballing gems like this in marker. Van Apple Peresi, they're going to get... Robin Van Persie, Real Madrid that is, which is interesting because uh, last week El Mundo was saying uh, Van Persie's loco for Barca. And uh, then of course there was this, probably my favourite headline of the week, yes it's Moo, proof that before becoming a manager, Jose Mourinho was a player. Explains marker, 
He played for four different teams, including one of Liverpudlian expats by the looks of it, reaching as high as the second division and once scoring a hat-trick in the cup. Well, in your face, Sergio Ramos. And on that bombshell, that's it for today's Paper Roundup. Next week, it's the return of the Champions League, of course, so Paper Review is having the week off. Have a lovely time with the extra five minutes next Friday, and we'll see you in a fortnight.